Hello and welcome to another Creative Coding video. Today we're going to explore randomness a little bit further. In the last two videos we introduced ourselves to the idea of randomness and we explored how we could create circles of different sizes. And the size of the circle wasn't chosen by us, but was chosen by the computer randomly. So we gave the computer a range to pick a number from, and it picked a number at random from that range and used that as the size of the circle. Now that was a simple example, but it was quite interesting because we were handing over some creative control to the computer. Today we're going to look again at randomness, but used in a slightly different way. We're going to keep it simple, but it'll be quite interesting as well. Okay, so I'm logged into open processing as usual, and we've done that many times now, so I won't uh, go over that again. If you need to remind yourself, have a look at the earlier videos. I've got a setup section here, which again is only using the simple instruction to set us up. And in the draw section, which you'll remember is where we put our instructions for drawing, I've got just four simple instructions. And as you can see, I'm going to be drawing two circles. And they are both going to be centered in the middle of the canvas at 400-300. And the first one is going to be bigger than the second one. The first one will have a size of 300 and the second one will have a size of 200. The difference is, the other difference is that this one will be filled with orange and this one will be filled with red. Now circle instructions and fill instructions are things we've looked at a few times before. So if you need a reminder, do go and look at those earlier videos. Now when I run this code, you won't be surprised by the result. That's it. A larger orange circle and a smaller red circle. Now today, exploring randomness, we're not going to change the size of the circles. What we're going to do is to change the colors. Now what I want to do is to have a list of colors and I want the computer to pick one of those colors from that list at random and use it to fill in a circle. Now lists are something new, so let's explore what a list is and how we can code it. So, you know, a list is something that we, you know, understand intuitively, you know. We can have a list of numbers, three, seven, eight, two. That's a list. When we code lists, we tell the computer that this is going to be a list by putting them in square brackets. So square brackets tells the computer, look out, a list is coming. So when a computer sees this, it'll say, aha, square bracket, I've seen that one. So I'm expecting a list of things. So we've got numbers here, three, comma, seven, eight, two, and they're separated by commas. And we end the list with another square bracket. Now, we don't want um, to use numbers in our list. We want a list of colors. So let's think about how we could do that. Well, if we go back to our code, you'll see that orange is just the word orange in quote marks. And the word red in quote marks means the color red. The quote marks are a way of telling the computer that this is um, some text and it's not to be interpreted any other way. It's just literal. This is just the word red or the word orange. So if I have red and I want another color in my list, I might have orange and I might have blue. That's a list of three things. 
and I put the square brackets around it so the computer knows that there's a list coming. So let's just repeat what we've said. We've said we're going to create a list, not of numbers, but of colours. And this list has three colours, three things. Red, orange and blue. That's a list of three colours. How do we get the computer to just pick one of those at random? Well, the random instruction does that. So that the instruction is random. We use round brackets as usual. With many instructions, round brackets are how we pass information to the instruction. And this time we're passing a list for it to pick one from. Let's say that again, because it's new and we'll just repeat it so we understand it better. We'll start from the instruction this time. The instruction is random. And we always have round brackets when we're passing information to an instruction. Like you'll see here, this is the fill instruction and we have round brackets and we pass the colour to that. This is the circle instruction and we have round brackets and we pass the location and size. So in this example we have random with round brackets and we're passing some information to that instruction. And what we're doing is we're passing a list. So that means square brackets. That's a lot of brackets on the screen. <laughs> and let's just say we want three things in that list. So we're going to be separating them by commas. And we can say blue, green, and let's just say yellow. That should pick one of those three colours. Let's see if we can use that now in our fill instructions. So instead of red, I'm going to be typing random. And it's telling, I'm going to tell random to pick something from a list. And that list will have, I don't know, red purple, mm, let's think of another one, blue. So let's look at what we've coded there. We have a list of three colours. Everything in the list is separated by commas. That's passed to the random instruction to pick one from pick one item from that list at random and that colour that it's picked is used for the fill instruction. There's quite a lot going on there. <laughs> um, but let's see the effect. Before we click run, what do we think is going to happen? We're still drawing the large circle, which is going to be orange, but the inner smaller circle should be filled with either red, purple or blue. Let's try it. Red. Let's run it again. Blue. Purple. Blue again. Blue again. So this is interesting. We've, we've used randomness in a different way. Instead of picking a number to be used as a size, we're now picking something from a list, a list of colours. And we're asking the computer to pick one of those colours at random and use that to fill a circle. Now I could add more to that list. I could add pink and yellow. That makes the list bigger. One, two, three, four, five. Five things in the list. Oh, it's picked yellow <laughs> at random. It wasn't planned. Pink, 
I wonder if he'll get a green. No, he won't get a green, because green isn't in the list. <laughs> we can make the list shorter. It's just two colours here. It could be green or purple, and it won't be any other colour, because my list is now only two items. Let's run that. Green, purple, 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 green. So that's quite simple. But the reason we've introduced it is it's a new way of using randomness and quite an interesting one to be able to pick randomly from a list. So have a go yourselves, have a have a play, um, make your own colour palettes. Um, one of the things you could do if you wanted is to draw another circle that's even smaller, maybe size 100, and have a different set of colours for that. Pink there or yellow and see what colour combinations are drawn. That's an interesting one. That's a nice one. Hmm, not sure about that one. That one works quite well. And so on. So you can have quite a lot of fun with this and the code's quite simple. Um, I know there's quite a lot of brackets but the way we've talked about it unentangled that and talked about starting from the list, explaining that we're feeding the list to go into the random instruction to pick one, and then using fail to pick a colour. Okay, have fun with that, and um, you know, certainly have an explore and um, try it yourself. It's the best way to learn. So until next time, bye. <laughs>